Hi guys, this is Ajin Abraham. So I'll be talking about OWASP Xenotic Access Exploitation Framework. It is an advanced cross-site scripting detection and exploitation framework. So this is how it looks like. It basically got four modules: the scanner module, the information gathering module, and uh, the exploitation module, and also a tools or utility module. And it supports three browser engines, the Trident, WebKit, and the Kiko. So let's jump into the scanner module. The first thing you have to do is you have to configure the server. For that, you can go to settings menu, configure server, and provide the IP address and the port number. So the semi-persistent hook will come in handy at that part of exploitation. We will talk about that later. So let's start the server. So you can see that uh, the injection URL is copied to the clipboard and the server is started up. So it's ready to work. So first thing first, uh, let's see how to do a basic scan. So for that, I have an URL. Copy and paste in the URL field. Now if you want to test the parameters, say keywords, what you can do is basically you can uh, Put it at the end of the URL or otherwise you can put it in the parameter field. And you can go for manual mode. If you want to test manually, it will test all the payloads and uh, the tool is having about a thousand five thirty payloads. So you can manually test one by one each payloads. Or otherwise to save the time you can go for auto mode which allows you to do the stuff automatically. Uh, all you have to do is you have to specify the time interval. And now you can see that uh, payloads are being injected and the response are obtained lively. So that means there is zero false positive. And uh, you can see that uh, at some payload you will get a pop up. So that means it's vulnerable. So this is how you can do a basic scan. And uh, there is another scanning option called XSS Fuzzer. So this Fuzzer will allow you to test any part of the URL. We can test the parameter, the value, or anywhere of the URL. All you have to do is uh, to test a particular part, you have to replace that part with the open square bracket, capital X, and a closing square bracket. You can also specify the time interval, and you can start the Fuzzer. So that will uh, replace that particular uh, parameter uh, character that we give with the payload and you can see that the scanner is working and for the sake of the demo I'm skipping some payloads. Now you can see the pop up. Right. So, using all this browser engine is a mess, you will get it out of pop-up box. So, let's stay back with Trident. And another scanner feature is a post request scanner. It basically allows you to scan the post request for accesses. So, I got another URL. Let's browse it. So this is basically a password reset form. It basically is having a text field and a button. So let's go for the form. So let's search for action to find out the form. You can see that the form method is post and uh, it is having an absolute URL in the action field. And uh, also there is an interesting text field for uh, the ID forgot one underscore email. So we want to test that particular parameter. Go to the post request scanner, provide the URL there, and then have a parameter. That is for dot one underscore email. And let's uh, give a payload manually. So it's script from closing script tag and uh, go for post. So now you can see it. Prompt alert. 
So you can also see that there's a post request header, the contents of the post request header, the response header, and the response body. And here also you can automate the stuff. We have to add that capital X and the offerings and closing square brackets for automation. You can specify the time interval, and uh, you can also add cookies if you are dealing with uh, authenticated pages and all. So that's about a post request scanner. Now you have header scan, which allows you to scan, you know, all part of a header for basic detection of excesses, and it support get, post, and trace request currently. So I got one more website. Let's go to the website. It's an IP to host name resolving website. So you just give in an IP. Interestingly, you can see that my user ID was reflected there. So uh, I believe that it may be, you know, like uh, that particular uh, value is obtained from the user ID and that is from the header. So how will we fuzz that or test that? So in that case, Header scanner will come in handy. So you can just view the source and uh, you can find out the form. So it's post method and uh, you can see the action URL, the subscribe URL, and an input with the name IP. So that's a text type of input. So what we can we're gonna do is like uh, we, we have to specify all the details for that particular request. So it's a post request, we'll be providing the host address, the absolute path. And uh, now let's change the user agent in the header to a payload. So I'm manually specifying a payload. And uh, let's specify the post parameter that is IP equals some IP. And uh, let's make a request. Yeah, we got an alert box. So again, that particular field. Uh, value is uh, not properly sanitized and escape and uh, it supports basically the get and trace request as I told before also you can specify cookies to deal with authenticated pages and also you can specify additional headers if necessary and uh, here also you have basically the headers and the body so that's about the scanner Now let's jump into the information gathering module. So first you have to configure the server and uh, inject the hook. So you can go for, uh, basically I'm testing in a local environment. So I have to obtain an IP. So it's, there's my IP 192.168.83.1. You will go for semi-persistent hook which provides a particular level of persistence so let's start the server so that means the injection hook is copied hook url is copied to the clipboard the hook of Xenotis is called Zook and uh, this is a target machine and this is a vulnerable application a wonderful vulnerable application you should use OWASP bricks and uh, the payload uh, the uh, hook got injected and if you just go and read the web console in case of Firefox, you can see that a request, get request for xss.js, which is basically hosted under the Synotics payload server, is made. So let's uh, check one information gathering module. That is WAF fingerprinting. This particular module does not require the hook, it is independent. So it is used to detect the WAF, it's based on WAF loops. So if you, you can just provide an URL and uh, fingerprint the WAF. It is having a database of possible WAF. If uh, the database, if the WAFs in the uh, databases are there, it will find out that that particular WAF is present. Otherwise, if uh, it's not able to detect the WAF, then it will give suggestions whether there's a possibility of a WAF or not. 
So here you can see that the server header changed, so a wrap is possibly detected, and uh, it gives more details about the responses and such like that. So that's about the wrap detection module, and all other uh, modules requires this proof to be there. So this is victim fingerprinting, which allows you to fingerprint the victim. So you can see the victim.php file executed in the background at the victim side. And uh, you can see that it gives you the location, the country code, the IP state, IP address, host name, and all the details of ISP, etc. So that's about basic victim fingerprinting. Now we can uh, go with the browser features detector, which basically fingerprint all the features of the browser. So you can see that Java is another flash not available and other plugins. So this but basically allows you to wider your scope of exploitation. And uh, another interesting feature is internal network scanner, which basically allows you to scan the internal network of the victim. See, I'm just specifying an IP range. And I'm starting the scan. So in the meanwhile, if you just go back to the victim side, you can see that there's a get request being made to all these IP addresses. And uh, once the uh, scanning is finished, the responses are provided back. So basically, it does uh, ports and uh, uh, WebSocket-based scanning. So you can see that the result is there. So one of the hosts is up. So that's about the data network scanner. Now let's see the exploitation modules. Here I got dry by reverse shell. So you have to provide a reverse IP and a port number and you have to start the listener. It basically listens for reverse connections. So it's listening at port 2000. And uh, now we have to start the server. So once you start the server, payload is injected in the hook. So this time there is a vulnerable Java applet. So if the victim run the vulnerable Java applet, a drive-by reverse shell got executed and uh, you can get a shell on the victim's box. So it's there. That's about the reverse shell and uh, another interesting module concerned by the Persistent module, that's a Firefox add on that is Linux credential stealer. If you inject this add on, uh, you can see at the written side a request for add on installation is uh, popped up. And if the victim installed that, and uh, if we restarted his Firefox instance, you can see that you will get the contents of the password file and the shadow file. So the credentials are stolen basically, and uh, this add-on stays there forever. Uh, the contents of the shadow file is obtained only if uh, the Firefox is uh, running under root privileges. Otherwise, you will get only the password file. So that's about the credential stealer. And, uh, Another interesting exploitation module is the reverse HTTP reverse shell. So you have to start the server and the proxy. And there is a basic option for response layer, I think, which is pretty self understandable. And uh, let's start the web shell. So you have to configure your browser to the specified, uh, you know, given uh, URL and port number. So that is, uh, in this case, it's 127.0.01 and 8008. So this is a web shell console and uh, for the sake of the demo, I'm just injecting a WordPress, a local WordPress installation with the Nautix hook. So I'm just copying the hook and I'm just echoing it. Let's save it. And uh, I'm taking another browser instance. So 
So if you just check the source code. You can see that uh, that particular script is injected. So meanwhile, you will get a session. If you can eject. So if you eject the session, you can see that the victim session is reproduced, reproduced at attacker side. And uh, say suppose the victim is logged in to his address. So now, uh, if you just uh, go back to the attackers console, you can see that another session is ready for ejecting. Eject that too. Now you will get, uh, you know, the authenticated session, right? You know, are in the so that's about the exploitation module, and uh, you got one more exciting. Exploitation module, which is persistent module called Firefox Session Stealer, which basically steals the session store file, which is uh, responsible for storing the session while a crash or unexpected close occurs. So you have to specify the details of your FTP to which the session file shall be uploaded at a specified time interval. And this one works only on Windows. So once I inject the payload, there is a payload, uh, there is an add-on installation. Request that if a victim install that, uh, and uh, you can see that there's two sessions of Facebook and Twitter. So once the victim installed that, and if you check the task manager, you can see that there is an explorable for Firefox updater, which is our, uh, you know, which is executed as a result of an add-on installation. It will upload our session store file to the FTP. So if you check our FTP, you can see that the session store file is being updated and is being uploaded. And you have to save that file in the profile directory of your Firefox. So I'm just copying it and uh, placing it over my Firefox profile directory. So once I retrieve that and uh, once I open my Firefox installation, you can see that the same session at the victim side is being reproduced here and uh, you are logged into both Facebook and Twitter. So this is how the session store, uh, the session ceiling works.